Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be going over the complete setup of getting the vector working on a WirePod server running on a Raspberry Pi. If you don't mind dropping this video a like, uh, giving the channel a subscribe, it really helps grow the channel. And if you have any questions, just ask them right down in the comments. I try to answer as many comments and questions as fast as possible. So if you want your vector to work again, what time is it, Vector? 8.02. Then follow along these steps and you'll have WirePod up and running on your Raspberry Pi in no time at all. First thing you'll need is a Raspberry Pi. I'm using a Model 3B. Uh, you can use the newer 4 and 5, which will get faster results, but it does work uh, on the Model 3B and higher. So f next, you will need an SD card. Um, you don't have to wipe these cards. You uh, will basically wipe them when you install the operating system. You throw that into your computer of choice or in your device of choice. I like to use the Raspberry Pi imager. You can get this right on raspberrypi.org. And <clears throat> what you'll need to do is choose the operating system. That will be the 64-bit, the first top option that pops up. Then you just choose your storage that you just put into your computer. Hopefully it shows up. <laughs> there it goes. All right, so it's gonna try to, <clears throat> you know, open up the SD card. Basically, you just close those and choose the SD card, and then you click the write button. This will write the operating system for the Raspberry Pi onto the SD card. Once that write process is done, you remove the SD card from your computer, grab the little micro SD card, and put that into your Raspberry Pi and boot it up for the first time. All right, the Raspberry Pi is booted up for the first time. Basically, you just have to go through the on-screen instructions to set up your Raspberry Pi for the first time, uh, setting up your time zone, getting your Wi-Fi connection all set up, and then you'll get to the main screen. After you're done with the initial Raspberry Pi setup, your Raspberry Pi will reboot and you should see a home screen like this. The first thing you'll need to do is go up to the top left corner and open up a terminal and open up a browser. So this little box here is the terminal and then this little world globe is a browser. On the Raspberry Pi 3, it does run a little bit slow, so it will take a few seconds for these uh, items to actually even open up here. So once you get your terminal and your browser open, I just prefer to go to google.com and punch in WirePod install, and then hit enter. That should bring up this Kirkry123 WirePod. Just click that link. Then you simply scroll down to the installation guide. Then that will bring you into the installation of WirePod. And the first thing you have to do is reset your vector to 0 0.90 firmware. So just throw your vector on the uh, home charger and double press the back button to get it to the pairing screen. And uh, I guess it really doesn't matter what screen it's on. You're basically just going to hold the back button down for about 15 seconds. The screen will go out and then you'll see the lights on the back light back up. Once they light up, that's when you know that you've held it down long enough and it should be resetting back to stock factory 0 0.90 firmware. When you see the two darker blue LEDs light up like that, that's when you know that you should be going back to the stock firmware. Once Vector boots back up, we basically just wanna check, double check that the uh, firmware flashed correctly. So we are going to double press the back button to reveal the pairing screen and lift the arms up and down. And that will reveal all the information. And you can see right there, 0 0.9.0. So it's on the stock firmware. Now what we want to do is use Vector's little wheels to scroll down. You can see the little arrow here on the exit. We want to go to clear user data. So we're going to scroll the little wheels. You basically just move his wheels and it will move the arrow. Then you lift the arms up and down to select and then it will be on exit or confirm. We want to scroll the little wheels down again to get to the confirm option and then lift the arms 
up and down. That will reboot the vector. Now we have him on 0 0.90 firmware, and we also have the user data cleared. So from the Linux guide, we are just going to simply follow these instructions, and you just basically copy and paste, copy, and then paste into the terminal and hit enter. And that's all you have to do to run these commands. So then we're going to go on to this and you, they actually have these nice little convenient buttons where you can just click them and that will automatically copy the next step. So we're already done with one, two, three. We're on to step three already. All right, so Git was already the newest version installed. So now we're on to the next step and that would just be step three here. So I copied and pasted and hit enter. And this will continue on cloning into WirePod and installing WirePod. All right, that finished. Now we just have to go grab step four, the run sh. I'm just gonna click the copy button here and then paste it into the terminal and hit enter. And this is gonna take a while. This is actually going to uh, install WirePod. So this takes a little while depending on your internet connection. Just wait for this to finish. Once that is finally done, you should see this. WirePod is ready to run, ready to move on to the next step and run sudo this. So that would be step five. You can just grab right here, copy, and we're gonna paste right here and hit enter. This is going to start WirePod and it's going to have to also uh, download a whole bunch more files and prerequisites to get this thing actually started and running for the first time. So just give that a little bit more time now. All right, and after all that, it should say initializing variables, configuration, blah, 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 and it'll give you the IP address that your WirePod escape pod server is running on on your home network. So definitely remember that uh, IP address, it's going to be different than mine, most likely. And now we are going to go on to the next step. So as you can see, it should show this log right here. So then we're just gonna scroll down to step six. Step six is actually going to that uh, IP address and you will go to this address that you see on your Raspberry Pi up here on your network uh, after you hover over your network. I'm going to that right here on my other laptop. And you should see all this, the WirePod setup. This is where you're going to set up the APIs for setting up your weather and your language uh, recognition and all that. And at the end, you have to go submit settings. This will initialize WirePod. And this is going to allow WirePod to run and start up every time your Raspberry Pi boots up. So all you have to do is plug in your Raspberry Pi and WirePod will automatically be running in the background. So copy and paste this. Oh, and you also have to press control C to stop WirePod from running because technically WirePod is running over here. So we're gonna click on this terminal, press control C to stop WirePod from running. And then we are going to copy and paste that other command from step six and hit enter. And this will allow WirePod to start up in the background. So my apologies, that was actually step seven that was getting the WirePod running in the background. And then one more thing that we have to do, you're going to skip step eight unless you have a dev or OSKR bot. You're gonna come down to step nine and same thing down here, we're just gonna copy and paste this code right here. And we're going to throw that into the terminal and press paste and enter. This is going to change the Raspberry Pi's host name to escape pod. So you might get these errors down here. Uh, it still should work. So as soon as this is done, we're going to reboot the Raspberry Pi by typing reboot and pressing enter. And that should reboot the Raspberry Pi. So once you have pressed that submit button and set up all your weather and language APIs, it should redirect to this page right here. And this is where you'll see the server settings, the bot settings and everything. This is where we're going to go to connect the actual vector. We're gonna come over here to bot setup and we're going to click the 
Kurgantic <coughs> vector wire pod. Oh, if I could click it. This should open up a window that looks like this. And you'll need to have your vector already on. And what you want to do is double press the back button to get to the pairing screen. Click the pair with vector button. And you will have to have Bluetooth on whatever device you're using to pair with vector. You click the vector that matches the vector number on your screen. Click pair. And that should open up a little window here. Yep, and it will reveal the code for vector to pair. So 158285. And hit enter. Then it's going to ask for the Wi-Fi information. This is just your home Wi-Fi network. You're basically connecting your vector to your home Wi-Fi and then hit enter and vector should, let's see here. So we're on firmware 0 0.90 at the moment. This should, yep, it automatically starts updating vector to the proper firmware, the WirePod firmware, which will be the 1.8 firmware. And you can see here on vector screen, the little cloud with the circular arrows going. So this means that the firmware is updating and we'll come back here shortly. It'll just be a little green bar that, you know, climbs its way across your screen here. So we are in the last stages. We're getting this note here. Vector has disconnected. If you were just downloading the OTA, Vector usually means that it's finished downloading the update. When he is done rebooting, pair the bot again, pressing the pair with Vector. So the update bar just went all the way across the screen. Uh, Vector just rebooted. Let's see what firmware he has. Double press the back button. Raise the arms up and down. I think. <laughs> What's going on, Vector? There it goes. Okay. So it's got the 2.01 firmware on there, which I don't really like, but it has a little EP at the end. That's the really important part. That's what we want to see. So we're going to exit out of that. Then we're going to go over here and try the pair with vector. Should have our vector still kind of in there because we've already paired this vector once before. I might ask for the little but uh, the little code. Oh, I wasn't on the I wasn't on the pairing screen. <laughs> pair with vector. Try this again. Pair. All right, it is asking me for the code. Okay, so 824134, 824134. And you should see the activate button. Vector will still just be blinking the little V. Click activate. You should pop up some settings here that you get to choose. Uh, I always choose enable Alexa, save settings. Should give us a big green check mark, hopefully. Yes, vector setup is complete. And vector screen now has a little um, Alexa code that you go and throw into your Amazon account, going to amazon.com slash code. And then once you put that code into your Amazon account and click allow, vector should come to life. Let's go do that real quick. All right, so I just threw my code into my Alexa Amazon account. Click continue should just be allow and vector should bounce to life you're ready to go using alexa and boom vector's alive hey vector hey vector what time is it All right, so you can see Vector working on Escape Pod. And it's answering questions. I haven't set up all the APIs yet, so it's not as smart as it could be. But Vector is alive and working again. If you've made it this far in the video, please drop a like. A subscribe is really appreciated. And if you have any comments or questions about setting up Vector or getting your wire pod set up on a Windows PC or on a Raspberry Pi, please reach out in the comments. I try to answer all the comments as quickly as I possibly can. Thanks for watching.